even though that we're, I think we're not, we don't have to put it in our current appendix. Yeah. So the above equipment has some effort. Oh, that thing. Well, nobody reads that, so I'm not even going to pay any attention to that. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> right? I'm not, I'm, not even gonna, I'm not even going to worry about that. <laughs> so, I think we can start. Today, we are very happy to have a special seminar by Cairo Camp from Charles University Park. Hey, we'll talk about uh, Amdur the Master of Study Effective Field Theory. Thank you very much. Um, this is not my first time in Davis, and I hope it's my probably third or fourth time. I'm not, sure. And I hope it's not my last. And uh, it's uh, always a pleasure to be with Yaroslav and discuss this, these topics. And uh, I hope we will also um, bring, uh, we will also push it a little bit further this time I'm here. And I'm happy I can also speak a little bit about what we have done and what we plan to do. And um, it will be it will be overview of what we, what we started. I think it was 2013. Uh, this project of amplitudes. Uh, we have a vague idea of what we want to do, and um, we will witness what we have done. And uh, we will end up with our new paper, which appeared a uh, few days. Ago. Like few few weeks, few weeks ago. So our motivation was to bring the idea of amplitude uh, to effective field theories. This is also the title of my of my talk. So let me stress or let me uh, put in one uh, sentence what is the objective of, uh, of people working on amplitude. It's, uh, I think, for me, it's study a priori known objects from, from different perspective. This perspective would be completely different. It can be something you would not expect or would not understand. Some amplitude heat drawn or completely crazy thing. But what is important, basically, you, you know what you are studying. You are studying something which you can get uh, or obtain, for, in principle, you can obtain from uh, Using uh, like Feynman diagrams or things you, you already know. Uh, what do you have? Why you would do so? Uh, the example we have in mind is gluon amplitudes, as you probably know. Uh, back in 1986, uh, six uh, point gluon scattering was calculated due to the need of uh, experimental uh, measurements. It was one of the process which was not uh, this basic uh, basic. Uh, uh, basic uh, project behind, uh, for example, jet physics, let's call it, uh, which they are missing, and it was calculated after several pages of uh, hard calculation. It was uh, find out that the result, at least for some combination, is relatively simple. So this is this known uh, known um, uh, known object, and we want to study, it, or people want to naturally ask the question how to see this simplicity different way or how to see it uh, in principle without complicated calculation. So the answer to this question at this point is gluon amplitude is hidden in uh, several steps uh, and I will uh, go through it because it will be also important for our uh, in our effective uh, uh, theory. We will basically copy those steps and try to uh, try to use them there. So first important step is possibility of so-called pole, pole um, ordering uh, or stripping the amplitude. You know, the, every gluon has its different color connected with, uh, with, uh, with the uh, group T, uh, uh, with, uh, with the generator T. But it's possible, at least at the three level, to, to order them, this, uh, this, this amplitude according to this formula. Then it simplified uh, considerably the calculation because instead of uh, calculating uh, different group of uh, specifying gluon species, we can just focus on one uh, kinematical uh, variable, this strip, we can call it strip amplitude. Uh, at three level, 
propagators are the only poles of such a such a function, and thanks to the ordering, thanks to this uh, trace, the only this such a poles can be can be of this uh, of this of this form. So, thanks to the ordering, it's a consecutive uh, series of chain of, of, of momenta for all such poles. Then. If you think about this problem of calculating the, the whole amplitude, it's, uh, it's clear that if you sit on, uh, on some factorization channel, among all these uh, Feynman diagrams, you have to pick one which has this property where you, where you put those, uh, where, where you sit, uh, you pick from all those amplitude the one which, which corresponds to this, to this amplitude. So this is summarized in this, uh, in, in this uh, Weinberg's theorem of one particle unitarity that somehow the amplitude split to two parts, left and right, and it is the propagator. But this also requires locality, right? Yes, yes. Then another important step to understand better the, or simplify the um, complicated calculation is so-called BCFW relations and, um, and the trick is hidden in um, going to the complex plane with the momenta so one of the possibility how to do it is the shift of two external momenta P1 and P2 generally PI and PJ uh, to some uh, uh, some using some um, uh, using some uh, using some um, variable z complex variable z and using some uh, so far unspecified four momenta q but keeping p1 and p2 on shell and of course plus and minus we wouldn't spoil the com uh, complete um, uh, uh, that sum of all momenta is fixed so on top of that, uh, the on shellness will fix the form of this, of this Q. Uh, it's clear that such a function, uh, complexified function uh, AZ, will, be, will, will have poles even coming from the propagator. And of course, the original function, at least for this, uh, for this uh, shift, is obtained for value when we set the value Z equal 0. Then we can use the Cauchy theorem and write uh, down that um, circle around all poles and obtain this, this formula. If on top of it, we assume that the amplitude uh, vanishes at infinity, we can uh, put this zero on the left hand side and connect the original amplitude, which is, which is, uh, which is a zero bit uh, residue. So how to calculate the residue? So we can, uh, we know that uh, for the simple poles residue, uh, we, we need to know, uh, we need to know the poles, this whole simple poles. So we can ask, we can solve easily when this uh, propagator is equal to zero. Uh, due to the shift, let me remind it, due to this form, if we sum this P1, PI and PJ, of course we will cancel Z out. So it's clear that uh, this is a solution if and only if one of these i or j is uh, between a and b, not both and not, of course, not none. So exactly one should be between them, and then we can easily we can easily solve it, put it back, and calculate the residue, and uh, then let me return back. So let me remind what we are after. We are after the amplitude, the sum of the residue. So we know what is the residue, here we calculated it, so we put it back to this formula and this is this, uh, this, uh, this result. So this is the famous BCFW relation, it's based on the Cauchy formula uh, using this two line shift and it's clear, as a rec if you look at that, it's, it's, it's clear it has to be a recursive formula because it's uh, on the left hand side where is the full amplitude, it's, uh, it should be somehow Obtained via the sum from the lower number, a lower point amplitude. 
So in principle, down to three point amplitudes. What is important or what, why we did it, the number of uh, terms is much smaller, so it would be used, for example, showing why this uh, Park and Taylor formula is so simple, for example, but I will not go into this detail. I will only show you that really the conventional, uh, conventional uh, Feynman diagram methods is really not so efficient in the number of terms comparing the uh, number of, uh, of these PCFW W terms. So this is so far nothing new, it's just a fast motivation. Let's, let's say this is what we, what we knew those uh, six or seven years ago when we decided to apply this method for effective field theories. Uh, it, so far it was used for this um, for example, for this gluon, for renormalizable theory, and of course it, it seemed uh, a little bit crazy to use it for effective field theories. So first problem is, biggest problem is that we have assume, assumed that uh, amplitude vanishes at infinity. Uh, of course, we would say, so we have to generalize it a little bit. If this is not the case, we have some boundary term in Cauchy's formula. And let me put it uh, in some um, simple example what we, what, what we mean by this. So suppose you would, uh, you, would uh, uh, you would just blindly use the, 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 the BCFW. You would say, okay, give me some starting uh, amplitude, three-point amplitude, and you, I have the formula and I should get something. Uh, it's true, I mean, nobody cannot uh, prevent you from this, but then not, the question is what kind of theory or amplitude of what kind of theories you calculate. So this is, this is the textbook example, uh, what can happen if you use this three-point formula. It's, we know the answer, it should be the theory which has no, uh, no pole in infinity. So it, it, it see, if there is a boundary term in Cauchy's formula, it means that the boundary should, uh, should vanish. So from this point of view, if you put it uh, other way around, if you calculate something, you calculate and you are asking what theory it is, it simply means that somehow the constant lambda, you don't see it from the three point amplitude, is somehow tied to this, uh, to this, to this constant. So if you use only this, of course, your theory doesn't know that there is a lambda. On the other hand, you use the assumption that the boundary, there is no boundary term. So you somehow assume that this lambda, if it is there, has some particular value. Uh, it's a coincidence, this is somehow this theory you would calculate without knowing even that it's, it's a supersymmetrical extension of this uh, QED. But, but uh, if we know, we don't know that the is that if lambda is not equal to e square, in this theory, is not an uncertain transpose? Not, you are not, uh, you, you, it's, it's possible, I'm not saying you cannot calculate it somehow, I'm just saying if you use the naive, uh, naive uh, formula, you have to allow all ingredients, you have to, you have to fulfill all ingredients, and this is done only when this happens, when it is supersymmetrical, and uh, it's connected with the boundary terms and behavior at infinity. Yeah, but I, I'm I, not saying, and this will be the part of my talk, you I cannot know. somehow avoid this, but uh, okay. you, the crucial point, you cannot directly use BCFW as it is without changing. Ah, sure, sure. you can change the shape. Uh, so, and this is, this is the point, because now we are at effective field theories, where we have an infinite power of these lambda terms, mm -hmm. and of course, you would like to find some uh, some uh, way to fix uh, the connection between them. Uh, from the Feynman, so if you take, this is a schematic, if you take uh, six-point amplitude, there are vertices from this, those lambda four, and there is one vertex lambda six. So what is the way how we can fix the, so this is the answer, and we would like to get this answer and it's clear this lambda six is not fixed by the by the by the pole behavior. So what is the condition in order to link this to to terms similar to this supersymmetry in, the, in this in this case? 
If you, if you study effective field theories, uh, usual uh, steps are that you have a symmetry, and you, this is this, uh, let's call it Weinberg way of how we introduce it. Uh, I mean, it's funny because uh, this all the reminds already in BCFW with the old S program metrics from 60s, and of course, we were all happy, or I was not that active in that time, but uh, uh, that in the 70s Weinberg came with this idea of Lagrangian. So it's, it's somehow that we are returning back in history and trying to uh, reborn the old S-matrix program with somehow with different uh, priorities or different way of doing it. But today, at least, the usual steps are symmetry, Lagrangian, amplitude, and then physical quantities. Uh, from this point of view, we would like to offer different way. The amplitudes will be the crucial point, and then only we can, if you are asked, you can you can try to to, to, to get uh, to write down the Lagrangian, or if you want, you can skip this and only after asking about the about the symmetry. So we have to have this in the mind that it's a little bit uh, different thinking about the about the studied uh, theories uh, from this uh, point of view. And our aim is, if possible, classification of all interesting electro-effective field theories. So, uh, it's not that we are after some particular theories. I mean, of course, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can use some particular theory to find amplitudes, then asking about the properties, then generalize, but uh, We are not starting our problems of studying or about thinking about this general, about the general picture for some particular programs, about some particular models or about some particular uh, property. Our aim is to, to define the properties so we find some interesting theories. And at least in one example, it was uh, we were lucky or we were happy at least to, to find something something new which was not known before. Thanks to this, uh, thanks to this logic. Uh, if you are trying to be as simple as possible, uh, mm, uh, you would start. You would like to think, okay, so effective field theory. Let's let's focus on spin zero, massless degrees of freedom with uh, three point interaction. We know that uh, for a given helicity. There is well-known uh, form, the amplitude uh, is, uh, is, is, is fixed. Uh, if we use, if you open the book and find this, uh, these vertices, um, you, can, you can then say, okay, so if I take those helicity zero, this H1, H2, H3, zero, it would lead to only one possibility. It would correspond to theory, five cube theory. And um, you can, of course, uh, uh, you can, of course, ask how this is possible because uh, I can imagine I can write three, uh, three phi's and put as many derivatives as I wish, and this cannot be an ivory thing. It cannot be it cannot be same as this five cube theory. But think this. It, you shouldn't forget this is a massless theory, so using the, uh, the equation of motion, you can always express this uh, using boxes to, to, to this form. And uh, on shell is such a such a such a such a term zero. Okay, so um, we have to we have to make it a little bit more complicated. We have to start with four point vertices. Uh, so let's start with a generic number of derivative like m, and we want to connect, as I motivated at the beginning, a few slides before, I would like to connect four point, these four point vertices with the six point vertices, so we can easily calculate how many derivative units at uh, six points, so the homogeneity would be, would be, would be the same, and these two guys will communicate with each other. So, okay, so let's uh, uh, let's make it 
as easy as uh, possible. So if you have uh, two derivatives here, you would get again two derivatives for six point. So in principle, you would say, oh, okay. So the simplest example of effective field theory, okay, we have to get rid. We cannot focus on three point vertices, but we start with four point vertices. The the smallest number of uh, derivatives these are two. So this would be viable Lagrangian. Unfortunately, even it looks generic enough. This is again nothing uh, nothing complicated. It's a trivial free theory because you can uh, you can uh, remove those complicated terms by a field redefinition. So after I don't know three pages, I'm still missing some uh, simple toy example. I can demonstrate the the, the, the model. So what what is uh, after this, so just, just to be clear, that's true for arbitrary Lorentz structures and all that. I mean, yes, 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 yes. This is just yeah. generic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I try at least here to put this uh, this Lorentz structure yeah, yeah. a little bit more uh, yeah, systematic. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm a little bit sure. Disorder. So it seems that the the simplest models we have to there are two possibilities we have to dig in. It's more derivatives. So two derivatives definitely wouldn't produce something non-trivial. Or this is the single scalar thing. So to make it a little bit more complicated and not trivial is to assume more flavors. So more flavors. So let's start with this uh, with this for, uh, second possibility. This will be our first possibility. So this is a generic uh, Lagrangian. We have two derivatives. We still want to keep two derivatives in, in, the, in, the, in the in the game. But then we can assume we have uh, we have a different uh, species of scale. Because such a theory is definitely not uh, trivial. It's not free. And of course, you would say, ah, this is a very complicated problem because if I can assume, I can simplify it. Let's let's assume only two species or two flavors, uh, three species, etc. And it seems it's very very complicated, and uh, the answer to this problem is uh, we think it's, uh, it's not solved completely. I mean, uh, maybe one can make some claims, but not at this moment. But let, we are still at the beginning of, uh, of classification. So let us assume any simplification, because we are really in the dark room and we don't know much about the problem. So any simplification is allowed at this at this at this moment. So we know the, the, the gluon case and we can assume okay if it was allowed in the in the if it was successful in the gluon case, we can make some assumption about the flavor ordering. So some group is somehow helping us organize the species, the flavors, and on top of it it allows us to write any amplitude uh, in this, uh, in this, in this form. If you assume this, uh, which in the history had two different names, so we were not the first one, of course, um, uh, considering this possibility. Um, uh, it has a name duality, and we can we can just simply call it uh, order diagrams. So if you if you assume this is this is true. Then calculating diagrams is a little bit simplified. Instead of all permutation, you can, uh, if you look on the on the on the picture, some permutation from the normal Feynman diagrams perspective are missing. You have only the ordered uh, ordered diagrams allowed. S was the uh, S was the S was the blue on case. Uh, so you can uh, you can of course calculate. You would get an, again a generic expression of of, of, of of this kind. So it's non-zero. This is the this is of course the first thing you can ask: is, is it really non-zero? So this is definitely non non-zero, but it looks complicated because how to connect uh, how to connect these two 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 guys. So and this is the this is the natural. Um, the decision to make that very important, um, very important uh, condition is so-called soft limit. Uh, I 
I decided to present this a little bit uh, different from the historical discovery we made in this 2013 or 2012 when we started, because of course we had the model in the mind and it was a nonlinear sigma model. I just tried to present it a little bit more generic, but um, and then in this nonlinear sigma model, this is the property of Adler zero. We of course knew that the theory has. So can I ask, I mean, because you, you said you were going to go from amplitudes to Lagrangians, but you're actually going from Lagrangians to amplitudes right now, right? Uh, so no, no Lagrangian was here. Right? Well, okay. So well, let me ask this. But I mean, if you just if you just tried to uh, apply, I guess I, I guess I was expecting that you were just going to uh, apply the the factorization, you know, the the, the Kuchazo language type factorization, and just construct some amplitude and try to interpret what you get. So I was wondering, like, in the, I should have asked this before, in the case of the single scalar, if you tried to just do that for a single scalar, would you just fail to find any solution? Or, or would there be, you know, is, is that even make sense what I'm asking? I'm not totally sure what I'm asking makes I mean, sense. I will, but that's what I, will, I, was I will continue in my talk and I will return back to this first possibility with a single scalar with more derivatives. Uh, yeah, the problem is that uh, MBCFW relies on the fact that the amplitude is fixed by factorization. Right. With under level of Lagrangian means that you have some seed interaction and all yeah. the other terms are fixed. Right. Like in Young's case, it's the gauge invariance which fixes, or in sure. gravity. Is but I mean, I, I just but if you have the generic yeah. case, you have infinite number of couplings, and nothing is fixed. Everything is allowed. So in order to run BCFW, you have to supplement infinite number of seed amplitudes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you cannot using amplitudes now. You cannot. So if you, if you if you try to somehow have one seed amplitude, you would just fail to find any solution. And the that other way how to super, see super it, special the other way how to see it is that it doesn't manage at infinity. So it will not work. The Cauchy's formula, you will miss <coughs> the boundary terms at infinity. And the boundary terms are contact terms in the Lagrangian that you are missing. And it makes sense that you are missing because they have independent coupling. You cannot just hook up the coupling from nothing. Yeah. So, okay. so you're not actually going to end up constructing these amplitudes from that kind of recursion. No. But you're actually going to construct them from these... Uh, well, you're going to start looking for structures. But I mean, then I, then I, yeah. So sorry, I, I just I just want to understand. But so so, right. So what is the what is the condition of, of, of success here then again? I mean, if you're writing down these amplitudes, so it's somehow to connect these two terms, and one of the natural uh, condition is soft limit. So going with one momenta to zero, demanding that amplitude va would vanish. So you, you could ask why such a condition, because we know there is a theory, there is a model where it works, where you can prove that something like that is true. Yeah, yeah. I try to, I try to sell I'm, it in I'm different way, guessing. but of course it was... No, no, I'm, fine. I'm not criticizing because you're guessing. I'm fine with guessing. Yeah, but guess maybe, well, well, I could say, fine, like, right? the, the rules of the gate is that you have some, uh, let's say you have scalars with certain number of derivatives, and yeah. you write the generic Lagrangian. It has yeah. infinite number of terms parameterized by infinite number of couplings. Now, you can calculate an amplitude in this theory which will depend on these couplings. Right. And uh, normally, what you would do from the symmetry point of view is to find a symmetry which fixes all these couplings together and give right. you a unique theory. Here, the rules of the gate is forget the symmetry. Yeah. We don't know how to Closing search in the symmetry the space. Right. If I ask you what is some special symmetry, you don't know how to start. But then the amplitude, which is equivalent here, you just have kinematical constraints that you can impose and fix these couplings. Right. And the special theory must correspond to some symmetry, but you, that's a derivative. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Sure. Okay, good. Thank you. But at this point, it's easy. Yeah. I mean, you have basically very easy to calculate this, those terms. It's, I mean, it's not, it's yeah. not nothing. You would like, you would, you would like to need some condition, any condition, and this is definitely not the only one how to do it. But it, it will sure. turn out it's very fruitful and. Uh, and it's motivated by nonlinear sigma model and the so-called Adler zero. So it will give you some condition, and it will somehow define the whole theories. Uh, right. So in not only six point, this this will allow to calculate anything up to up to given uh, up to given all. <coughs> so so now I I turn it around. Okay, so you can say okay. So now in my previous logic, 
I have so I have some kind of theory, at least for six point, eight point maybe, if you are if you work hard you can get to ten point. You can guess there is something going on and there should be some symmetry responsible for that, that the amplitude somehow are fixed. You can guess that it would be a shift symmetry. Then you can you can calculate oh then there if there is a symmetry there should be a neutral current. You can calculate the board identities. You can you can obtain this uh, this uh, this I uh, can uh, again uh, rediscover this Adler zero, and then you can construct uh, the the whole Lagrangian if you if you want. Uh, but you can you can you can go and generalize this <coughs> this 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 possibility, and um, this is already first sign of, of possibility of uh, classification. Uh, so instead, so first the generalization is in the sense that we go with one moment up to zero, and we specify this as zero. But you can you can be a little bit more specific. You can uh, you can define the speed of how this is going to zero by this parameter sigma. Then a very important thing, which was which was clear in the previous, you have to have some parameter which would keep the homogeneity of uh, of it will somehow count the number of derivatives, and it will some, of course, depends on the number of legs. And this is this this uh, this this job uh, can do this parameter we call rho. It's uh, n is number of derivatives, and n is number of, of of legs. You can easily verify that these two guys, these two vertices, n and m tilde, uh, they should have the same. Same row, uh, same row, so they would uh, mix together. So, from this perspective, even going into much details, you could you could say, okay, so I have a generic Lagrangian, if you wish, which has somehow uh, for given number of uh, given number of field, given number of derivatives, and uh, you somehow. Uh, you somehow the, the condition which somehow fix the terms in the Lagrangian or play the role of the symmetry is uh, is this is this soft limit. Uh, of course, if you have a derivatives in the game, it's not very hard to to get uh, to get uh, to zero. But I mean, what is non-trivial is that this this speed or this uh, this sigma term, this uh, this faster zero, or how to call it. Is is bigger than would be the nine counting given from the from the amplitude. So you can a little bit play the algebra, and you can say, okay, if I have a row, row is uh, is counting number of derivatives, so row equals zero, I'll just row was n minus two. So if number of derivatives is two, row is zero. This is the first uh, non-trivial case. So if row is zero, sigma must be at least one. So this is this nonlinear sigma model. This was the first model I showed you before. Then, of course, you can you can have rho equal one, and from this condition you can find out so non-trivial theory should have a sigma equal two. For two is again two. For three is three, and so on. So I didn't quite get what rho is. What is rho again? Like rho is the number of derivatives, or average number of derivatives, because number of derivatives is connected with number of fields. So of course, if you have a if you have a vertex with many many legs, you you would have uh, more derivatives than, for example, four point vertices. So in some sense, it's it's the lowest vertex. Let's say it's four point vertex. So it has four legs. Four minus two is two. So I I mean yeah, we define. A, so number of derivatives for four point vertices will somehow give you immediately the row parameter. And we, we try to keep this parameter same in the in the theory. So you can of course have a theory, you can you can immediately ask what about mm -hmm. different row in theories, but this this makes things much easier to think about a single row. And when rho is an integer, there's an infinite series of operators with some scale still, some still number of same. derivatives. It relates the number of derivatives to the number of fields so that they yes. can all talk to each And of course, the bigger rho is Sorry. for the for the for the given number of yeah. legs. Yeah. Then, of course, you would you would expect easier to have this property. What is interesting if this property is that is not the naive property, which has yeah. term by term, but somehow these two terms has to combine to kill each other to obtain better than yeah. naive uh, behavior. Right. So this is like our first. Uh, 
think if you want to classify the interesting theories, they should they should fit this to this table. And now I can study it uh, step by step. So I can return back to these two derivatives case. Again, this is what I have before. And uh, I can repeat again that single scalar theory is a free theory, multiple scalar with the flavor ordering. You, you can find out this is the only theory. You, you get only one theory, no linear sigma model, and, it, uh, and that's it. Okay. Okay. Wait, for this flavor ordering, for example, you need SU and blue. If you assume that the scalar space is a few, then you can play the order. Mm. Yes, I mean, this is here, I assume it as a, if you have a flavor ordering, I'm not, I, I, of course, you can repeat and ask what is the response, what, 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 uh, what group is responsible for this flavor ordering, but if you, if you assume this is a, this is a condition, then you automatically get only one thing. You're saying it doesn't work for like S-O-N or S-P-N, it has to be S-U-N. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, the sigma models, yeah, there is a very restrictive set when, uh, yeah, uh, you can get. But I mean, the problem, yeah, but the problem is not set completely. We would say theory with four sp species. Uh, what are the interesting theories? This is not uh, this yeah, is not no, yeah, known. But, but we know it for two flavors, for three flavors. The answers to these questions. But yeah. if you would ask eight flavors, eight species, what are the theories? Is it only one? This one? As you as you three times as you three, or there are some more? This is still open subject. Uh, but uh, if you assume this flavor ordering, then there is only one theory. And for the world by S U N break into S U A minus one at the recent work? Yes, I will get to that. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, so rho equal one, sigma equal two, so it's double soft limit and the number of derivatives is you see for four point it's uh, it's four and here you have more derivatives. It's basically one derivative per field, so number of derivative rises with the number of uh, of uh, of Field. It was only case for rho equal zero. The number of derivatives was always two. So this is the now you have to expect rising rise of the number of derivatives. Uh, so you can uh, you can again repeat the same game. Now I return back to your question that you have a single single species. You don't you don't need uh, this theory is not it's, it's not trivial for single scalars, you don't need to complicate it with, uh, with more scalars. And you can repeat the calculation, get the condition for C3 and uh, connect, which would connect C3 with C2. You can now ask, ah, what is the symmetry? So you can, the Lagrangian is this cis, plus kinetic term, of course. So you can uh, somehow cook up uh, the, 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 the symmetry, which is, of course, valid only up to six point. But you can extend it. You can say, okay, I can put it to some generic CN, CN plus 1. So it's a symmetry. So if I plug this part here and this part here, it would cancel. It would give you this condition on generic CN plus 1, CN. You can put it down with other numbers and you can, uh, um, you can solve it. And the answer is this square root. So very well known theory DDI. So uh, you got uh, the solution for very well known and studied scalar theories from very generic principle from uh, how we would call it bottom up uh, from amplitude point of view. Uh, here in our paper we stress that uh, from this point of view, I mean the symmetry is always taken as something very strong and uh, the amplitudes of Lagrangian then follow. Here the, we presented it that different ways. So from this point of view, uh, uh, this limit was strong enough to, 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 to discover this symmetry. So from this point of view, there is nothing uh, dominant or the soft limit and symmetry are equivalent in some sense. So I can go on in the, in the table. Uh, the second step was rho equal to sigma equal to double soft limit and uh, you would get to be the similar game uh, Galileo theory. You could of course ask, because in the Galileo theories uh, you have several uh, 
uh, constant, depending on the dimension, you can ask whether I can... Uh, can, sorry, can I, sorry, can, I'm sorry, but can, I, can, I, can we go back to the other case? Can I just want to understand uh, so in order, in order to derive the uniquely the Dirac born Feldt action, did you only have to assume that the SOP theorem holds for all amplitudes, or did you assume that there had to be some symmetry that went to all orders, and then you see it, what I'm saying? This is this Maybe is it's a small this point, is. I mean, um, this I'm is curious about how you actually did it. Uh, this is a long time ago how we did it. I mean, this is this is for presentation purposes, so it doesn't need to reflect the reality how well, we did it in reality. But once you say that the amplitude has its own limit, it fixes the action. That's yeah. that's all. That's all. It fixes yeah. the entire action. Okay. Yeah. But of course, at the time when we did it, we yeah. knew that there is a DPI. We, of course, we were not that ignorant. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. but I mean, yeah, yeah. you can present it like this: that you really discover it without knowing the theory, and you would. You would, you would get the theory, the only one theory, then you look what kind of theory it is. Ah, it's DBI, so... Uh, okay, the, the, the procedure is that you start with infinite number of term in the action, which is B phi square to the n with coefficients, yeah. and now you want to fix these coefficients. Right. And basically, you want to find any property which fixes this coefficient. Right. Uh, these coefficients and the soft limit, it's not that surprising because it's a low energy theory, so you would expect that at, in the S metric something's going on at low energies. Right. That's not too many, that natural thing. The only thing is that for any constant, it has vanishing soft limit because it's derivatively coupled theory. Mm -hmm. So we have to find out something stronger and right. this but I mean, faster this vanishing is this stronger condition. In, in, in few pages we will, we will get the recursive formula which we are still missing it, and we missed this when we published this at that time. And with this recursive formula, we can make it more formal. What's going on, and uh, we can uh, we can really soft bootstrap it from from the starting uh, from the starting. But at this point, <coughs> really, you have to write like in principle infinite tower and right. help yourself with the symmetry to, to, to show it that it's 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 true like for the for the for the whole series. Otherwise, I can only tell you that it's a conjecture valid up to ten point or something. It would be only valid up to certain uh, order. Without, uh, yeah. but you need some tool, of course, to prove it up to all orders. Here, I show you using the symmetry, really, okay. and uh, and then uh, using this CN CN, prove it for all orders. But in principle, you can say like, we can only show you up to certain order, and it then would be only conjecture, or, uh, it would be not proved. But in this case, it was easy to, to, to show you up to all orders. I guess I have only 15 minutes left, uh, so I have to speed up. It's no, I think it's okay. Well, <laughs> well it depends on the audience. Well, right. well. Uh, <laughs> when you did it, did you already know that this is the TBI and the other is in Canada? Or did you? Well, I mean, well, uh, right. no, we knew the theories. We didn't know that they had anything nice in software yet. Mm. Yeah, so you, it's okay. Okay, you could be blind completely, not knowing. But of course, if you know that there is one theory which is very you nice, didn't know you that try. The theory corresponds to the idea of the DPI. Well, I didn't know what it's that one at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's still not all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, crucial point in the Galileo is to try to increase uh, the soft limitness. So, so let's say you get the Galileo. Using the using the similar trick, and now because there are several constants, you can still ask: Isn't it possible to get better behavior? Isn't it possible to obtain an enhanced soft limit? And this is this is exactly we were not capable to 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 to, to prove it up to all orders, but we we went up to here. We have verified that we we, we saw it certain combination of the constants, of the Galileo constants. So as I said here, uh, in principle, in four dimension, there are three parameters, D3, D5, D6. Only two are relevant due to dualities. And uh, we say, OK, so certain combination, it has property that up to very high PT order, which was 12 point order, we saw it has this property, but we were not sure. We didn't have a proof. We didn't see any symmetry. What's 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 going on? So we decided to to just make a conjecture. It seems there is a new theory. I don't think we call it special Galileo. Do you remember the name? It was uh, yeah. Gal four because we somehow thought it was connected with the four dimension. 
And uh, so we publish it, and I put explicitly the number just to compare that there are people smarter, at least uh, for this point. It took them only one month to, to, to discover or explain what is the symmetry, and uh, gave coin the name, which is now used, Special Galileo. So, uh, but at least our systematic way to look at the problem, and of course, knowing some possible candidate for, for those theories would help you considerably, but still we were capable to put our finger to, 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 to some, uh, to some uh, uh, place in this uh, parametric space and to say there might be some theory, new theory. And even though we play a little bit and we were very close uh, retrospectively, we almost had it in our notes that this kind of symmetry we didn't we didn't find it, and uh, thanks to these two gentlemen, uh, it's, it was found very quickly. Okay, so I, I promise there is a new tool we, we can use for this, and uh, instead of BCFW, use some general, uh, some BCF-like formula, and uh, uh, and uh, the important point is, as we said, connected with the fact that uh, in, at infinity it's not zero. But now we know there is uh, there is a soft limit which somehow at some in some cases completely fix the theory, and of course we can ask cannot we use the soft limit somehow to help us the behavior at infinity? Uh, so BCFW this was very well known before that uh, the shift I showed you is not the only possibility you can play with the shifts. So we also try different shifts and one of the uh, one of the shifts you can think is this uh, all aligned shift. So if, imagine it is possible to shift every every line by multiplying with some uh, x and z and some coefficients. And if this is possible, and for uh, uh, so this is definitely possible for depending on the dimension and uh, uh, number of legs. It's it's for certain number of legs. It's possible. For example, for six point legs in four dimension, this is definitely this is definitely calculable. So the, so the important thing is those constant of parameters should be different. So if you assume that such a shift is possible, then you can use this this. Um, this, this piece and put it uh, in the denominator. Uh, thanks to the soft limits, we didn't uh, we didn't introduce new poles because this, by definition, by construction, should this this guy should cancel with, with the with the with the with the, with the soft limitness of this of this a because by definition it should have a it should have a this 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 this, this property. So. Uh, this is this is this is just uh, this is this uh, idea behind this recur this enhanced recursion or this BCF um, uh, light recursion uh, in the for the soft uh, theories. Sorry, so so I thought the issue. So what what happened to the contribution at infinity? How do you know there's no contribution? At well, no, infinity is easy because there is z in the denominator. So if you you help it, of course. You, I didn't count what is the exact numbers, but you definitely help because you put z right. here. But how do you know that it's enough? I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. Enough. This is this. You have to really calculate and do the. But the calculation is easy because this is this is basically following the homogeneity because you you shift all lines, so you are basically following number of derivatives. So it's. I don't have here the the okay. algebra, so you, but it's it you should can be. Show that it's enough. Actually. It's it's you enough. Yeah. You can, okay. But, yeah, so it's not that difficult, but it's easy to, to really calculate. Mm -hmm. So let me like finish at this point, uh, and, and I will then finish with the why you wanted to have this talk about the paper we, mm -hmm. we did uh, a few weeks ago. So um, we did similar thing, and I, if you are if you are interested, I can I can uh, I have some backup material. We, we did so. This was spin zero. So we did something for spin one at least. So not BBI, but BI theory uh, showed up. Um, you already asked me before the seminar. We avoided we avoided the Fermi degrees of freedom, but there were some other groups working on that. Uh, 
I edit uh, recently in the last year something uh, I worked um, uh, with people in Lund in Sweden uh, and slightly they were interested in possibility to extend it beyond the living <coughs> order. Uh, the question we already discussed, multiple flavors, not only when it's flavor ordering is allowed, this, is, this was some project we worked on, we didn't publish much, but I hope we, we, can, uh, we can show some results in the near future. Uh, so this is connected with this multiple flavor, only two flavor, this was mentioned in one of our paper in some section. And I think we can add at least three flavors we, we understand now better. Mixed case, this is a big um, project. Uh, we worked hard on it, but uh, nothing really publishable so far. Of course, you can, if you are capable of coming from spin zero to spin one, you should be capable to discuss something on spin two. Again, uh, nothing. Uh, nothing uh, publishable or nothing finished here. Um, we are thinking about non-abelian non boarding felt. Uh, and one thing I would love to understand better is uh, everything was massless, so how masses can be incorporated. Loop corrections, uh, another, another interesting subject. But we, we, we were like, um, we were like satisfied with our uh, with our parametrization, and um, we even called the periodic table of effective field theories. But we were really surprised last year. I think it was after Yaroslav gave seminar in, um, and um, Mikhail Schiffman uh, heard the talk. It started uh, another discussion because. As I said, we, we were really we saw that we have powerful method to classify effective field theories, and personally, I think it's a more efficient, at, at least for me, easier method uh, how to how to study how to study effective field theories because the alternative is um, is um, is uh, standard method is really complicated. You have to talk about spontaneous symmetry breaking, then you have to somehow focus of, uh, of the group, uh, you can of course use the, uh, you would say the semi-simple classification of groups, so you, but why the group should be semi-simple, it might be probably more complicated. You have CCWZ construction uh, and um, and you are never sure whether this is, this is uh, there cannot be something behind the corner. So we, we thought that this amplitude method is at some point, at some sense, easier than these complicated, uh, complicated alternatives. And uh, for example, if you would ask what is the theory for two flavors or two species, you would say, okay, it might be this O3 over O2, but maybe there is something else. So from the amplitude method, it's clear it's only this possibility and nothing else. Um, for three flavors, as I said, there is ongoing project. But uh, and this is what happened after the seminar Yaroslav gave last year. Um, uh, it happened that we were, we, were, um, we were asked to discuss or to, to look at this completely broken O3 theory, or SU2, or generally speaking, SUN minus, uh, to SUN minus 1. It's a very simple, it's a very simple group, and I'm I was trying to look at some construction in the lecture notes or somewhere because usually you have SU, you have O3 over O2 or O4 over O3 usually discussed for, for of course, uh, terminological reason. But I mean, if you try to, to show the CCWZ construction, this compensator small group, this is the simplest example you can think, completely broken theory. There is, n there is no little group. So I'm surprised, of course it's known by people, but you would hardly find the example how to do it, even though it's, it's the simplest example you can think of. But the point was, when we look at the, and we constructed it, and write the Lagrangian, it has, it, it has a different forms, and in the literature it, it studies from the very different perspectives and using different techniques, what was, what was, we were, we were very surprised when we find out that the amplitudes don't have other zero. And we ask, oh, 
what we have missed, we, we took Adler zero as very important principle which could help us to classify all theories. And suddenly we have very simple theories, an example, which definitely is a representative of, uh, of spontaneous symmetry breaking. It has a Goldstone boson, so it, it means that we are missing something crucial in our classification. And it's true. Flavor outing? Hmm? Is it because of flavor outing? Yes, three point uh, vertex. Uh, uh, so, what we are missing? Of course, we are missing non zero Adler zero. <laughs> so, if theory doesn't uh, give you Adler zero, you cannot use classification based on Adler zero to, to, to see the theory. So, it's beyond the scope of our classification, and it immediately told us our method is not general, at least, it cannot describe all uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking. At cannot describe all effective field theories. So the natural question, can we extend it? So only two few pages, I hope I, I make it in time. So let's repeat just briefly what is what is the Adler zero, what is the standard textbook derivation of Adler zero. So you have a you have a necessary and sufficient condition of, of, of spontaneous symmetry breaking. It's hidden in this in this current nether current. This will help you if you if you think it in the diagrams from this nether current, you have to you have to get such a diagram naturally, and then because the current you assume is uh, is conserved, you would end up if you multiply this is zero, you would end up that amplitude with this soft uh, emission of some pion is connected with some remnants, and now comes the assumption which is usually usually mentioned that the SL that uh, there is no pole in this remnant and then you have the Adler zero so in this uh, in this uh, derivation everything is quite general so the only weak point when you can uh, when you have then there was a possibility to miss Adler zero is this remnant so a remnant must be regular in the limit and if it is not then you are missing Adler zero in uh, in um, for the Goldstone bosons. So there are two possibilities when you can have a uh, when the remnant uh, is uh, not regular, and it's the the simplest uh, simplest uh, how to see it is if you in the theory you have allowed the qubit vertices. So if you would go with this, so here is one over this two momenta plus square. And of course, if you if you would go with um, uh, so it's one over p one dot p two, so it's 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 not regular. If you go with p one to zero, it will be one over this p one will be in the denominator. So it's 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 clear for the theory with cubic vertices. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the remnant uh, might be not regular. Of course, you could say, ah, but uh, I can always get rid of. I also mention it uh, in the in the in the pre, uh, some transparency. You can get rid of the three-point vertices by field redefinition. So it cannot be the only source because you can always get rid of three-point vertices. But it's, it it gave back to to you via the nether current. If nether current is quadratic in the fields, or if the symmetry has a linear term in fields, you can similarly and similarly um, put it back the the the, the problem problem with this with this remnant is that it's not regular. But when Adler Adler derived the theorem, they mm -hmm. noticed the loophole. I no, of course it's 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 known. I mean, uh, oh, they they know the loophole. Of course, I mean I mean it's in the textbook. It's it's written like this, and they assume and the remnant is regular, so their loophole is mentioned there. So if not. And this is but the, they know that there the are two, two conditions that uh, if you satisfy, they will have ah, this scenario. They I don't, this. yeah, we never, we didn't find any 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 source of okay. studying this, so, okay. yeah, so this, I probably it's written somewhere, it's not that difficult after all, but was okay. never studied. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, let's back to, to SU2, uh, going to SU1, or 1. Um, 
You can simplify it a little bit. You can uh, so you have three goals on bosons. So you can rotate it to just to simplify to two charge, five plus minus and one neutral. And um, uh, so there is some simplification. So for the neutral mode, you have a standard Adler zero, but you have you have violation of the Adler zero for the for the charge. And I mean, I I know we know we have a little bit problem to present this generalization Adler zero, but this is the simplest way how we can uh, how we can present. So if you go with P one to zero for this charge um, field, you have to do it's not zero right hand side, but it has this property. So you have to there is one term when you get when you sum. Over you sum over the neutral field and you cancel one of them and use the momenta of that you, you get rid of, you put it you put it for this charge because you put P1 to going to zero. So on the right hand side you cannot have P1. So you put you put uh, you put this. Of course the nice thing just to get away this phi phi plus you cannot do because it would violate the charge conservation. So but here, this is okay from the charge perspective, and then you have another possibility. By the way, you can take it as an answer. If you think I have the amplitude which has n phi plus and n phi minuses and m uh, neutral fields, and if I want to get rid of one of the of the field, what could be the right hand side? You know, there should be n minus one field, and what you can do because you have the charge uh, charge uh, conservation. There, there are these two possibilities. You cancel one of the neutral, use the moment of the neutral for the charge, and then you you cancel one uh, one uh, one positive and one negative, and add one neutral case. So, if you think a little bit, there is not more other options you can do. So, let's say this is an answer with this x and y, and do the calculation, and you can find out it works really. It f fixes the the constant. You can verify or read it verified on up to seven point. And of course, it could be proved. And this is written in the in the in our in our um, paper. It could be verified. It, it doesn't need to be answered. So uh, that's it. Uh, this is this is what uh, what we did and. Um, uh, we generalize this other zero, and um, we hope it would help us to generalize our our our, our classification of, of field theories. We haven't done much in this direction, but this is ongoing. So let me summarize what uh, what I try to convince you. I try to convince you there is possibility to to study effective field theories more generically. It's motivated by the methods employed for randomizable theories. Um, there is a lot of stuff going on. Uh, for example, there are uh, statements uh, like analogy between the randomizable theory, which I already mentioned, and there is also analogy between gravity and soft scale theories, and it's today's article. So I <laughs> haven't put much because I haven't read that yet, but uh, it seems a nice paper. So we use it at least for the classification of scalar theories. We were lucky to discover, not only we rediscovered all other theories and um, uh, try to, uh, to we, we haven't only showed their unique status of all DBI, Galileo, but we also discovered one, uh, we helped to discover one theory. For the spin one, it was so far we found only one, one theory and we, we generalized the Adler zero. So we try to use the question whether we really this will really give us some new theory. We are hoping we are hoping for this. Thank you very much. I have quite a one question. For the BI theory for the demand particle, uh, have we proved to all order or fixed all quantum particles? Or bi for yeah. the for the for the vector. Uh, this is this is for okay. So I had some <laughs> backup uh, backup material. Uh, it's it's to all orders, of course. Uh, I mean okay. the, the simplification for the bi 
is, is very similar to this uh, rho equal zero. So due to the gauge invariance, the, the, the object is F you knew mm -hmm. to play with. Mm -hmm. So you don't have like another derivative. So you have the objects like F, ma F mu nu. So you can, generically, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can write something, something like this as the most generic, uh, generic, uh, uh, generic uh, form of the of the of the Lagrangian, but then we we prove it by a uh, so we did it for as as you said for the limited number of of, of terms, mm -hmm. but then we found this recursive formula which somehow okay. prove it to up to all orders. So okay. So this is the strongest way how you can see whether it's up to all orders or not. Probably that okay. There should be some uh, water and deity explanation, right, for this? Yes, there is. I I don't think I put it put it here. So yeah, but uh, that okay. Is there any physical intuition to your answer for this general? Yeah, so physical intuition, this was, I, I hope this is how I presented it, uh, that, uh, I mean, this can be, this can be proved from, from the, from the theory on general ground, what is this remnant, etc. Or you can prove it from the given theory. But here I try to give you, like, this, uh, like, the ansatz is the, is the, like, my physical intuition. Uh, uh, so the, the crucial point you need, you need the odd number of vertices. So, of course, uh, many theories, many theories, for example, <coughs> for example, rho equal one, you cannot write the odd number if I'm not wrong, because you would have, a, you would have an odd number of uh, derivatives, and due to the Lorentz um, symmetry, mm -hmm. You cannot contract the the, the the indices if there are no some uh, uh, way how to contract via epsilon. But I think for odd number it's not possible. So so not all theories you can think this generalization wouldn't fit for all theories. But uh, if you have an odd vertices, then you have to start to think about this uh, this other zero. Generalization of zero. So uh, I cannot give you some other <laughs> intuition than that this is you can like think what it could be on the right hand side if it is not zero. And so you have to somehow think that you okay. The simplest thing would be if there is no charge conjugation and you would go with one field to zero. You just you just erase this field and that's it. This is this is possibility like to this is the most intuitive thing. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, uh, we were also thinking about this direction. But then you have the, we had the problem to, to find some like symmetry or uh, to explain what is what is it. But I I'm <laughs> sorry I cannot <laughs> offer you yeah. some. Uh, when you say, for example, can you eliminate two fields, add all the momentum together to the first one or something? No, I mean, but I mean, the, this is very easy. I mean, you have to sum through all all other guys somehow. Yeah, I say you, you eliminate one field and put the momentum into Yeah, the but I mean, this is... But, but, about but I mean, this is two of them add all the momentum. <laughs> yeah, to well, I mean, <laughs> it's arbitrary. I mean, this 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 is organized very well because I put this uh, chart here. Mm -hmm. Imagine you would have a generic uh, generic uh, species I. Mm -hmm. So the important thing to realize is that you are changing the species of all others. So there is this sum always going through all others. And you are changing only one always. You are using the moment of that one. You, you and this is somehow important. And you are changing. Uh, you are changing the flavor of of, of all individual uh, individual terms. 
this is crucial point. I mean, this is the simplest uh, example of, of, of this. And it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's 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 all coming from this remnant, uh, and uh, you somehow have to exchange the flavor in the. Yeah, zero is simple. I guess <laughs> I agree. This is this is definitely true. Yeah, we have some generalization also of this generalization, but this is really this is also the reason why I'm here. Basically, we have to discuss it and try to see whether we can understand. But, uh, but do we have any symmetry argument for this? Yes, yes. I mean, this is for what I'm dating or. Uh, Yes, yes. I mean, basically, basically, it's, I think it's already in the paper. There is okay. a decent, decent, of course, it's only four pages, so mm -hmm. we didn't have much, much space, but uh, uh, we offer the, 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 the proof. I mean, uh, basically, you have a theory here behind it, so, mm -hmm. but the... So, with S, U, and minus S, U, and minus, I won't derive it. Yes. You can derive it, but you can derive it also on generic ground uh, for the... Because from this theory, you need only to look what are the three-point vertices mm -hmm. and what is not their current. This is the only thing you needed. And the, the new thing, which could be from the from the classical other zero, is this um, is this either cubic mm -hmm. term in the vertex or um, a quadratic term in the in the in the not their current. Mm -hmm. In the symmetry, in the symmetry is the is, is the linear in the field. So if there is some term, and you can you can describe it by the constant, or you can parameterize it by the constant. So it could be it could be quite general. It's not limited to the to the to this theory. But this was like starting theory. It was the first example where it happened. So I think maybe we should, we should discuss continue discussions, but we should. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's, let's, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Yaroslav, he...